Sitting in the ninth grade, learning about parabolas. y equals x squared. Mr. Gao is showing you how you can move the parabola around. Move it up or down by adding constants. Move it left or right with a special x term. You can squeeze it or squish it. You can flip it upside down with a minus sign. You can even swap the x's and y's around and turn it sideways. You can do anything. But what about a diagonal parabola? What about a parabola that's been rotated 45 degrees? Or 60 degrees? Or 30 degrees? Or 237.618 degrees? Can you do that? Hmm, nah. Nah, that's too hard. Whatever, maybe you'll learn about it next year. You forget about it, and then next year comes, and now you're learning about cubics. y equals x cubed. Same thing, you can move it up or down, move it left or right, squeeze it, squish it, flip it, turn it sideways, but no rotation. No rotation. Why? Hmm. Oh well, maybe next next year. Next next year arrives, and now it's trigonometry. Sine and cosine. But imagine that, a diagonal sine wave. Like an infinite staircase travelling to the end of the universe. You could walk out to space. Wouldn't take more than a few days. In just ten years, you'll reach the moon. Four thousand years? Mars. Although, Earth is still revolving once per day, so once you get to Mars, you'll be spinning at like, I don't know, 60 million kilometres per hour? Hmm. Sounds dangerous. But anyway, what kind of monster of an equation could this possibly be? Does it even exist? Hmm, yes! Yes, 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 it does exist. And not only does it exist, we can calculate it. We can calculate it, and not only can we calculate it, but there's a very simple trick that will let you rotate any graph you want. And I mean any graph. Not just parabolas, cubics, and sines. No, I'm talking about polynomials, and rational functions, and algebraic curves, and transcendental curves, non-differentiable curves, discontinuous curves, parametric curves, and even mob. Mob. What is mob? I don't even know what mob means. Doesn't matter. We can still rotate it anyway. I can spin this mob all day. Round and around and around and around Shut and around. Shut up and tell us what we're already reading. Okay, fine, fine. Here's how you do it. The trick is not to try to rotate the graph itself, but to rotate the entire xy plane. Sounds even more crazy, I know, but bear with me. Forget about parabolas for now. Here we've got the xy plane. What is the xy plane? The plane is a giant collection of points. An infinite collection of points that fill up the entire space. Okay, so say we've got some random point in the plane, P. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to rotate P around the plane by some angle theta. P is going to rotate around by theta to this new point, which I'll call P prime. Okay, P rotates around to P prime. So what we want to do is figure out what P prime is, given the point P and the angle theta. Okay, let's see. First, we're going to need some coordinates for P. X, Y. Yep. And X is the X coordinate, which means it's this length in red. And Y is the Y coordinate, this length in blue. Okay, and next we're also going to need this distance. Now, for this, we could do Pythagoras and get, what, uh, square root of X squared plus Y squared. But actually, it turns out there's no need. In the end, this distance becomes irrelevant. So instead, I'm just going to call it r, okay? But that means this distance is also r as well, right? Because p is just rotating around, like it's on a string. Yeah. Okay, now it's time to give some coordinates to p prime. And of course, I will call them x prime and y prime. x prime, y prime. Not to be confused with x, y. Okay, those are p's coordinates. Yeah, in fact, let me hide this away for now. We don't need it right now. Okay. So x prime is this length in red, and y prime is this length in blue. So how do we find those? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously trigonometry. Oh, please, no, anything but sine and cosine. Uh, I guess it's the only way. Okay, fine. But in order to use sine and cos, we need to know what this angle is. Yeah, so I'll just give it a, I'll just give it a temporary name then. 
alpha. This angle is alpha. Okay, and now we just do it. Combine theta and alpha to get this angle, theta plus alpha. And here is our right triangle. Trig time. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Just what we need. That gives us x prime equals r cos theta plus alpha. And y prime equals r sine of theta plus alpha. Okay, and then we can expand both of those to get x prime equals r cos theta cos alpha minus r sine theta sine alpha. Oh man, and y prime equals r sine theta cos alpha plus r cos theta sine alpha. Uh, yes, I know, don't worry, it will be over soon. Okay, now cos alpha sine alpha. We need to deal with those two. Luckily, we can just use p to do that. So bring back p, get rid of all this junk, and bring back p. Nice. So now we've got this right triangle. And, oh look, it's already done for us. Sweet. Cos alpha is x over r, and sine alpha is y over r. Nice. Now that's more like it. And finally, we can go back down here and switch in x over r for the cos alphas, and y over r for the sine alphas. Then expand it all out. The r's cancel. Excellent. And finally, when the dust settles, x prime equals x cos theta minus y sine theta, and y prime equals x sine theta plus y cos theta. And that's it. P prime has coordinates x cos theta minus y sine theta, and x sine theta plus y cos theta. So if you give me the point x, y, and you want to rotate it by an angle of theta, all you have to do is swap the x for x cos theta minus y sine theta, and swap the y for x sine theta plus y cos theta. And that's it. Wow. Actually, not too awfully horrible. Hmm. Okay, then. So now we can rotate a single point around the plane. Yeah, cool. But what about the parabola? How do we do that? Wait a minute. A parabola is a collection of points. Right? y equals x squared, that's just the collection of all the points x, y, which satisfy y equals x squared. So, if we take all of those points and rotate them at the same time, then the whole parabola is going to rotate as well. And all we have to do is swap the x's for x cos theta minus y sine theta, and swap the y's for x sine theta plus y cos theta. Oh, no way. Let's do a diagonal parabola. Diagonal parabola, 45 degrees. So, let theta equal 45 degrees, and... um. Cos 45 is 1 over root 2, sine 45 is also 1 over root 2, okay, and now y equals x squared, so we swap the x for x minus y over root 2, and swap the y for x plus y over root 2, expand that out, make it look nice, dress it up, x squared plus y squared equals x root 2 plus 2xy plus y root 2. That's it! That's a diagonal parabola! It works! Yes! Now let's do it again, but with this time 30 degrees. No problemo. Same thing, but with theta equals 30. Turns out to be 3x squared plus y squared equals 2x plus 2xy root 3 plus 2y root 3. Nice. But why even choose a specific angle at all? We do the general case. Swap the x's for x cos theta minus y sine theta. Swap the y's for x sine theta plus y cos theta. And let theta just run between 0 and 360 degrees. Yeah, let's go... Oh, wait, hang on. Um, Desmos wants radians instead of degrees. Fine, radians then. Let theta run between 0 and 2 pi. Whatever. Go! Spinning parabola! Yes! But why only a parabola? Cubic! y equals x cubed! Same thing! Replace the x's with x cos theta minus y sine theta. Replace the y's with x sine theta plus y cos theta. Let theta run between 0 and 2 pi. Go! It works! It actually works! And we can mess around with it too, you know. Add a constant, shift it off center. Add in an x term, make it more bendy. Hmm. 
But man, we're just getting started. Forget about boring polynomials. What about sine? y equals sine x. Replace the x's with x cos theta minus y sine theta. Replace the y's with x sine theta plus y cos theta. Let theta run between 0 and 2 pi. Here we go. Spin. Yes, spinning sine. Oh, and now we can do that infinite staircase. Diagonal sine. Let theta equal 45 degrees. And, uh, ooh, x plus y equals root 2 sine of x minus y over root 2. Wow, x, y both inside and outside the sine. Damn, imagine trying to graph that one by hand. And what about something really crazy, like x, y equals 10 of x plus y? Look at this thing. Well, here goes nothing. Replace the x's with x cos theta minus y sine theta. Replace the y's with x sine theta plus y cos theta. Now spin! My god, it's perfect! Wow. Though I'm pretty sure those dots are not supposed to be there. Should be all smooth. Smooth lines. But Desmos can't handle the precision. Ha, <laughs> even Desmos is having trouble. Any graph, no matter how complicated, as long as you can write it, you can rotate it. Sine of e to the xy equals 4 over xy. I don't even know how to describe this thing. Like a hyperbola, but with freckles. Really? Wait. e to the xy, sine 4 over xy, those should be continuous. Why is it making dots? Wait a minute. These are not dots. They are lines. Desmos, you liar! You have failed me, Desmos. All I ask for is infinite precision. Is that really so much to ask? <sighs> anyway, replace the x's, replace the y's, and spin. Mod of sine x sine y equals 1 over 4 sine y. What the hell? Sine inside a mod? Oh well. Replace the x's with x cos theta minus y sine theta. Replace the y's with x sine theta plus y cos theta. Go! Another one. Sine of y equals sine of x times the floor of sine x plus 0 0.6. Okay, this is just ridiculous. Replace the x's, replace the y's, spin. Parametric graphs also work, with a little adjusting. Oh, and in case you forgot what a parametric graph is, basically, instead of having a single equation, like y equals x, and plotting all the points which satisfy y equals x, what we do instead is we create a new variable, usually called t. And then we say x equals t and y equals t. Okay, so x equals y equals t. It's the same thing, really. And so you might say, well, that's just dumb. Why would we do that? And yes, but that was a simple example. It can get more complicated. Try this. x equals sine of t over 9 and y equals sine of t over 14. What does this look like? Well, you can plug in any value for t, and it'll give you a single point on the graph. So all we have to do is plug in a bunch of values, connect the points up, and the graph just draws itself. Amazing. Computers love parametric equations, so easy to draw. This one is called a Lissajous curve, by the way. And yeah, good luck finding the normal xy equation for this. <laughs> So anyway, in general, parametric graphs look something like x equals f of t and y equals g of t. Okay, so how do we rotate a parametric graph? Well, it's pretty much the same, except instead of replacing the x's and y's, we replace the f's and g's. So f of t becomes f of t cos theta minus g of t sine theta, and g of t becomes f of t sine theta plus g of t cos theta. <laughs> Okay, so here's that Lissajous curve again. Let's see. Sine of t over 9 becomes sine of t over 9 cos theta minus sine of t over 14 sine theta. And sine of t over 14 becomes 
sine of t over 9 sine theta plus sine of t over 14 cos theta. Let theta run from 0 to 2 pi and go. There we go. We can even draw itself while it's spinning. Not bad. So any graph you want, now you know how to rotate it. And that's all. Nothing else to do. Absolutely nothing. That's the end of maths. Not! There is still way more we can do. Like, we've only been rotating around the origin of the plane, zero, zero. But what if you want to rotate around a different point? Well, we can easily do that too, and still more. Spin the inside faster than the outside. Elliptical orbits. Multiple rotation points. Spirals. But not today. Time's up. You'll just have to wait for part two for that. Please subscribe to my channel. Bye.